This presentation will address documenting sources using the APA Style 6th edition. What is APA Style? APA Style refers to the publication manual of the American Psychological Association and all its information and standards for writing and publishing with journals and books in the American Psychological Association Publishing House. It provides rules for the preparation of manuscripts and all the mechanical aspects of writing, which includes the spacing, capitalization, punctuation, and it gives us a proper format for doing our reference list. There is a website for the APA manual at apastyle.org, which is a supplementary resource for the publication manual. Why use APA style? Well, it allows readers to locate the sources that we consulted to write research papers for further study. It provides a consistent format within a particular academic discipline, such as nursing, social sciences, and it gives us credibility as a scholarly writer. Most importantly, it protects us from charges of plagiarism. The APA publication manual, in addition to its mechanical aspects, addresses the display of research data and it gives us detailed instructions on how to display our data in graphics, such as charts and graphs. It also deals with ethical and compliance issues, such as authorship, intellectual property, informed consent, protection of animals, and there are sections that describe the scholarly publication process and what peer review is. There's also a good section on what particular types of scholarly publications there are, such as review articles, articles addressing methodology, different kinds of studies, and so forth. The GSU Writing Center has excellent resources to assist you. There is an APA Word template for Microsoft Word in Microsoft Word 2003 and 2007, so you can download this template and use that to start your paper. All of the margins and indentations and spacing are already pre-formatted. You should purchase a copy of the APA Publication Manual 6th edition, but there also are copies in the GSU library at the reference desk for in-library use. The APA style website has a blog, the APA blog, which is written by the APA editors, where you can review commentary by the editors and argue with them. There are two main concerns that we have for the purposes of our presentation. Citing our sources from our academic papers in the reference list and citing sources within the body of our paper. These are the basic rules you should keep in mind for constructing a reference list. This is the template that will be followed for all APA style citations. We need to identify the type of document that we're using. Most likely this will be a book, a journal article, but occasionally you will be citing a law or maybe a website. APA requires that with all the sources that we use in our paper must be cited at the reference list and all of the citations in the reference list must appear within the body of the paper with only two exceptions. This applies to radio, television, broadcasts, any kind of recoverable data. So only include recoverable data. The exceptions are personal communications and classical texts, which are only cited within the body of your manuscript. You do not include those on your reference list. Here's some examples of in-text citations only. So quotes from the Bible or the Quran or classic authors such as Aristotle and Horatio. So when constructing our reference list, we must be as complete and accurate as possible. All of our entries need to be in alphabetical order by the author and if no author is given by the title of the item. You single space following punctuation within the entry, and all entries must be double spaced. Entries also should have one half inch hanging indent. These are the basic elements of a citation. 
the author or editor's name, which is first and then their first and middle initials. And the authors and editors are connected by an ampersand. The publication date, which is in parentheses. The title of the work. Publication information and locator information, such as the website or DOI number. Please see Chapter 7 on page 193 for more details. Digital Object Identifier. This is a new standard in APA. It is an alphanumeric string which begins with the small letters DOI and colon with no spaces, and it has begun to appear in publications since 2007. It applies to all types of media, in print or online, whether they be audio, video. If a DOI number appears, APA requests that you include it in the citation. Basic rules for citing a book. So for citing a book, we use the basic format of the author's last name and the initials. And if authors have similar last names and initials, to distinguish the authors, you can use the first name in brackets. Within the citation, we italicize the title of the book. Underlines are not used in APA. Capitalize the first word of a book title and the first word of the subtitle and any proper nouns. Do not underline. Put the edition and report numbers in parentheses after the book title. And you can see more rules on page 185 and page 186. To cite a book with one author, this is the basic format. Author's last name, first initials, date in parentheses, and we list the edition number that is more than the first edition. And you can use the abbreviation ED period, parentheses period. The United States Postal Service abbreviations are used for states with the exception of a few commonly known publication cities, and those are given in the APA manual such as Chicago, New York, and Los Angeles. Then again, we need to pay attention to the hanging indent, and for the purposes of our presentation, all citations are single space, only for the presentation purposes. You need to double space between the lines of the citations. If a book has two or more authors, we connect them with an ampersand. Use their last names first and then their initials. For an edited book, we also connect them with an ampersand and use the abbreviation EDS period. To cite a chapter within an edited book, we use the same format, but we use the format with the phrase in and the first initials of the editor connected with an ampersand with any subsequent editors. And we put the title of the book in italics and include the page numbers of the chapter. Citing a journal article. For journal articles, we include up to seven authors' names in the reference list. We capitalize the first word of the article title and the first word of the subtitle, if any, and any proper nouns. Only the title of the journal is italicized and the volume number. You include the issue number if each issue begins on page one. There are a few journals that are consecutively numbered throughout the volume year, and in that case, you would not use the issue number. Do not italicize the issue numbers. In citing journal articles, please use uppercase and lowercase as necessary. Only use the ampersand and any acronyms if it's part of the journal title. Give the inclusive page numbers, but do not use the initials P or PP, and include the DOI only if it is available. There are examples on page 199 through 202. So this is how we would do a journal article with one author. Same format as a book, and it's appropriate to use the word PASM to indicate that pages have been skipped over due to advertisements or other material that are not part of the article. In this particular citation, BDS it's appropriate to keep that capitalized because it is an acronym. Within the reference list, we cite up to seven authors and we connect them with an ampersand. 
If there's more than seven authors, we would use the abbreviation et al, et space al period for any subsequent authors. For particular publications that are magazines or newspapers that are published more regularly than a typical journal, we need to include the issue date. So for the journal science, we would include the date November 10th for this citation. But this does not happen very often. Some rules for electronic media. We use the same elements of the citation in the same order as you would for any other kind of print resource. And we can include notation of non-routine information to help identify the item in brackets. On page 186, there's more information. And include the DOI number if it's available. Now, for electronic media, especially journal articles, APA is asking that you include the home page of a journal if you retrieved an electronic journal article if the DOI number is not available. Please consult with your instructor for what they would like for you to do. It's not necessary, but crossref.org might help you identify a DOI number. Also, retrieval dates. These are included in citations that are formatted from EBSCO, ProQuest, and our other library databases, and it's appropriate to use them, especially if the material is updated or likely to be changed over time, such as a manuscript or a wiki. Do not use periods at the end of a web address, and please take out the live hypertext within your Microsoft Word document by backspacing. Test your web addresses to make sure they work. This is how we would cite an electronic book. Even though it's not pretty, it makes it easier for the end reader to retrieve the original item. Book chapters. We give the citation to the material that we actually use, which is a chapter of the book, and then we say what the title and the editors of the, the book is. And in this particular case, this classic book is widely available in a library database called Psych Books. The citation includes the information that it was retrieved from Psych Books. Citing websites. We include the date and the year if it's likely to change over time. This is how a journal article with the DOI number assigned is cited. Notice that there's no period after the DOI number and DOI is in lowercase. If a DOI number is not assigned, it's appropriate to give either the journal homepage or the database that you retrieved it from. APA manual requests that you do not include the name of the aggregate database that our library has but it might be acceptable for the purpose of academic papers. Some basic rules for reference citations in the text of your manuscript. You need to think about doing this whenever you, you use intellectual property that's not your own. Use the author and date. This serves to briefly identify the source and enables readers to locate the primary source that you used in writing your paper in the reference list. Place both the name and the year of publication separated by a comma in parentheses, or you can also do it without the parentheses, and I'll show you examples. But you need to give a citation each and every time the material is not your own, is referred to, or used in your paper. We still need to be concerned about plagiarism. Direct quotations. Use quotation marks if material is copied verbatim and is less than 40 words otherwise paraphrase. In either case, you need to give page numbers of the original material, even if you paraphrase. You put the page numbers of quotations in parentheses, but use block quotes if you use a quotation more than 40 words, and do not use quotation marks. A block quote is an indentation of five spaces from the left margin. Citing citations and text, we've mentioned using the author's name and date in parentheses, but if the name is part of your narrative, you only need to cite the year in parentheses. Or if both the name and the year are part of your narrative, you do not need to use a parenthesis at all. There are examples and more rules on page 174 through 179. And here are some examples. 
In the first example, we would read the sentence and skip over the author and date. But we can include the author, Walker, as part of our narrative. So Walker compared reaction times. And there's information that leads the reader to look at the reference list for Walker 2000. But we can also state that in 2000, Walker compared reaction times. And that is enough information to find the citation in the reference list. Multiple authors, citations in text. We need to cite two authors each and every time the citation occurs within the body of our paper. So each and every time we cite Blow, Bob, and Geller, we need to use their names and connect it with the word and. We could also put their names within the parenthesis, but we would also connect it with the word and. The ampersand is only used in the reference list. Multiple authors, citations, and text. For three to five authors, we cite all the authors the first time the reference occurs. In subsequent citations, we only need to use the surname of the first author, followed by et al., and the year if it is the first citation of the reference within a paragraph. And then again, et is et space al period. It's not in italics and it's not underlined. So our example of Macmullen, Shen, and Timko, the first time it's cited, we use the date in parentheses and all three authors, but then subsequently we just use Macmullen et al. and the date in parentheses. For six or more authors in text, we only need to cite only the surname of the first author followed by et al. First and every time. Citation of a work discussed in a secondary source. Please use this sparingly. It does not happen very often. APA prefers that you use primary sources. You cite the source that you actually read in the reference list, but you cite the primary source, the original work, in text, and then you give the citation for the secondary source that you actually read. Our example is Seidenberg and McClendon's study, and it was cited in an article by Coldheart, Curtis, Atkins, and Holler in 1993, and that's the article that we actually read, so that's what we put in our reference list. So, to summarize, when should you use a reference citation in text? When quoting any words that are not your own, when summarizing facts and ideas from a source, any source, whether print, audio, or visual. When paraphrasing a source, any time an idea comes from someone else, each time you use it, you must cite the source. When in doubt, cite. If there's no rule for citing a material that you need to use, use that general form and example. Review the APA style website for further examples and to see if someone else has cited a similar type item. And give more information rather than less. You can also consult with the Writing Center. Use your best judgment making careful decisions. Writing style. There are some discussions about writing style in chapter 4 on page 87. Within your manuscript you should use two spaces after each sentence period, one space after periods and abbreviations and after citations, and there are rules for the use of numbers and for writing with clarity. In summary, you are responsible for using the correct APA style and not relying on the formatting from a academic database or someone else's citation. You are also responsible for the grammar and anything else that's in your paper. You can contact the GSU Writing Center at this web address and email your papers for review to gsgrowl at govst.edu. On the GSU Writing Center website there are additional examples and tutorials for APA style. There's also an excellent handout from Professor Linda Geller of the University Library Faculty at this dspace.govst.edu address.